Greetings to everybody. I am Dr. Gaurav Shaha, second year postgraduate trainee of Department of Radio Diagnosis from Nilratan Sharkar Medical College, Kolkata. Today, I am going to present a case on semilobar holoprosen kephali, rare congenital brain anomaly. Introduction Holoprosen kephali is a disorder of brain development characterized by failure of differentiation and midline cleavage of prosencephalon or forebrain during embryonic life. Classically, holoprosencephaly has been divided into three subcategories on the basis of severity of malformation, allobar, semilobar, and lobar. These three types affect ventral prosencephalon severely. Another variant of prosencephaly which affects the dorsal prosencephalon severely is known as syntelencephaly. In practicality, the hollow prosencephalies represent a continuum of forebrain malformation with no clear distinction among the different categories. Case report. The patient was referred on day 2 of postnatal life from a subdivisional district hospital to pediatric medicine emergency of NRSMCH. Singular antenatal ultrasound assessment done on third trimester of gestation revealed diagnosis of microcephaly without mentioning any structural malformation of brain or face. In NRSMCH, the patient underwent ultrasound screening of brain followed by MRI brain. Imaging findings. As the patient was diagnosed with congenital microcephaly, developmental brain anomaly was suspected as a possible cause for which the patient underwent USG screening of brain. After the USG screening, the patient underwent MRI brain assessment to corroborate the ultrasonographic findings and to find out any other associated anomaly. USG and MRI findings have been described in the following slides. USG brain. Coronal sonogram shows non-visualization of fox cerebri anteriorly, incomplete interhemispheric fissure, fused frontal lobes, and partial fusion of thalami. In the next slide, USG brain images shows non-visualization non of corpus callosum at midline. In the next image of uh, USG brain, monoventricles with developed temporal horn noted Non-visualization of septum pellucidum is also noted. In the next slide of MRI brain, axial section of brain shows anteriorly fused frontal lobe with absent interhemispheric fissure. No intervening fax cerebri noted in anterior part of forebrain. At posterior part of forebrain, interhemispheric fissure noted with intervening rudimentary fax cerebri. The next slide both figure 5a and figure 5b shows at the anterior part of cerebral hemisphere there is fused frontal lobes. Interhemispheric fissure is not well formed, no fax cerebri visualized as well. In figure 5c, posteriorly occipital lobes of cerebral hemisphere are divided by visible interhemispheric fissure and ill defined fax. In figure 6a, it can be seen lateral ventricles are continuous at midline forming monoventricle with partially developed occipital and temporal horn. Absent septum pellucidum and rudimentary third ventricle are noted as well in figure 6a. In the next image of MRI brain, the, in the sagittal section at midline in anterior part no corpus callosal tissue noted but posteriorly Remnant of corpus callosal tissue noted, suggesting partial corpus callosal agenesis. In the next slide, figure 8a shows there is decreased number of sulci and gyri in brain parenchyma, suggesting patchy gyria. In the figure 8b, absent olfactory tracts and bulb noted. In the next image of facial anomalies, figure 9a shows cleft lip and cleft palate, and in figure 9b, mild hypotelorism noted. Diagnosis. From the imaging findings of USG and MRI brain, it can be concluded that this is a case of semilobar holoprosen kephali with partial corpus callosal agenesis and patchy gyria. 
Associated facial anomalies like cleft lips and cleft palates are noted as well. Discussion Holoprasen kephali is a complex brain malformation affecting both the forebrain and the face. It is estimated to occur in 1 in 16,000 live births and 1 in 250 conceptuses. Between the 18th and 20th day of, 28th day of gestation, the anterior portion of the neural tube, the prosencephalon, divides into two parts, telencephalon and diencephalon. These parts then undergo a cleavage. Under normal circumstances, these would result in a telencephalon and diencephalon divided into two half seeds. Incomplete cleavage of the prosencephalon results in a brain malformation known as holoprosencephaly. Holoprosencephaly is the only brain anomaly described in which the posterior corpus callosum forms in the absence of any anterior callosal formation. As the spectrum of holoprosencephaly is observed from the most poorly differentiated allobar brain to the most differentiated lobar brain, a gradient of development is seen in which the separation of the hemisphere, development of the fax cerebri and development of the cerebral hemisphere progress from the occipital pole of the frontal from the occipital pole to the frontal pole of the cerebrum. The anterior extent of the corpus callosal development correlates with the anterior extent of interhemispheric fissure formation and can be used as an approximate marker of brain development in holoprosencephalic patients. In other words, the further anterior the corpus forms, the better developed the brain. Diagnosis of holoprosencephaly is usually made prenatally in women by antenatal USG. In this case, however, diagnosis is done postnatally. Holoprosencephaly prognosis remains generally poor with the type of holoprosencephaly and coexisting craniofacial anomalies as key prognostic indicators. For instance, less than 20% of patients with allobar subtype will survive to 12 months while approximately 50% with the isolated semi-labor form will survive beyond one year. Management of holoprosencephaly, although mainly supportive, it requires a multidisciplinary approach aiming at managing symptoms and complications and avoiding added disability to improve the overall quality of life. Conclusion In conclusion, holoprosencephaly is a rare structural anomaly of the brain with a complex and multifactorial etiopathogenesis. It is prudent to diagnose it prenatally, classify its severity and forge its prognosis so that pa parents are counseled early enough to make informed decisions, especially where termination of pregnancy may be implicated.